Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. This video is about Graham Greene's short story, The End of the Party, which we have on uh, our syllabus of the reading, uh, the, the extensive reading course. This video is a kind of a wrap up of uh, uh, the discussion we had on Google Classroom platform. Uh, actually, there are some, uh, or there is some good quality discussion there and some. Uh, excellent uh, commands and answers from your colleagues so I encourage you to go back to the platform skim through these commands take notes and learn from them as I did myself well we always start with the author uh, who the author is uh, very briefly and for our purposes Graham Greene is a British uh, versatile Versatile and prolific versatility is he wrote on uh, different uh, uh, domains and disciplines. Uh, versatile, uh, author and prolific, that is, he wrote a lot. Uh, he died in, in the 1990s, I think, 1991 or 2, I don't remember. Anyway, uh, he wrote. 20, 25 novels, among whom there are some very well-known ones like uh, The Heart of the Matter, like The End of the Affair. Uh, he He's a playwright as well. He wrote plays. He is a critic and he uh, wrote uh, screenplays for uh, movies or for films as well. So in, indeed, several of his uh, novels of his works were uh, turned into uh, movies. Uh, what he is interested in, uh, as as far as the content of his works uh, is concerned, he wrote about uh, religious tensions, the paradoxes of moral and religious uh, identity. He's a Catholic himself. He's, he converted into Catholicism later on in his life. Um, but he also wrote about horror, mystery, and, and death. So this is generally about Graham Greene. Uh, The end of the party is a breath taking story, a breath arresting story, a story which leaves the reader puzzled, surprised, and 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 and, and even shocked at the end. It's the story of a nine-year uh, twin boys, uh, Francis and Peter Morton, who were invited uh, to a birthday party, which was uh, organized by. Uh, their neighbor, Mrs. Hen Falcon, for her son. Francis, the youngest uh, twin by matter of minutes, that is, youngest, uh, younger than his brother by matter of minutes, is scared from darkness beyond major, that is, in an usual way. Uh, tormented by the idea of having to play hide and seek, okay, which we call in Morocco Omaida or uh, cash cash right when we used to play when uh, you were we were young I don't know uh, to what extent it is still played today given the uh, prevalence of uh, video games and uh, and uh, those technological gadgets anyway so tormented by the idea of having to play hide and seek in the party uh, as it was the case last year he employs all his efforts to escape going to the party but all his excuses were to avail to were to to no avail we see to be to no avail it is to fail right the uh, habasudan as we say in Arabic, if you want to translate it into Arabic. Even his twin brother, Peter, at Peter's attempts to uh, save him, to defend him, uh, were doomed to failure. So, he intended, he tended at last, he was forced to do so. So, the lights went off, the game started, but the end was tragic. You know, the end, the end of the party was the end of Francis, him, 
self. The story took place on a single day, on the 5th of January. The place is not mentioned, but what makes the sitting in the story is the general atmosphere in which the events unfold. And what makes the atmosphere in the story are the elements of uh, fear, darkness, rain, uh, the dream, some kind of mystery, uh, birds, bats, and death. And all of these elements make what we call the Gothic atmosphere. So this is a psychological horror story which can be categorized under the genre of uh, Gothic literature. Gothic, G-O-T-H-I-C, Gothic, Gothic literature. Gothic literature I recall, is uh, composed of uh, grim and terrifying elements, frightening aspects of the psyche, uh, elements of, there, there is a prevalence of the elements of uh, what I have just said of, uh, of death, of mystery, uh, fear, darkness, death, uh, blood, uh, old decaying houses, you know it. I'm sure you watch some movies uh, which belongs to this category. For example, The Hobbit, Dracula, The House of the Usher, which is uh, a remaking of uh, Edgar Allan Poe's short story, uh, The Fall of the House of the Usher. Uh, <clears throat> Edgar Allan Poe himself is a writer who specializes in this genre, the genre of the Gothic. So I repeat, uh, the sitting is, I've just said, uh, uh, and the genre is a gothic. It is a psychological horror story which can be categorized under the genre of the gothic. Francis and Peter are the major characters in the story. They are the protagonists. Francis, who is the youngest by a matter of few minutes, that is, he stayed in the womb, uh, in the darkness of the womb, a few minutes more than 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 his uh, twin brother, uh, Peter, uh, Francis is psychologically impaired. He is uh, fragile. He is anxious. He is delicate. He is isolated and withdrawn. Uh, he is uh, intensely fearful of, of the dark. He, he fears the darkness beyond measure in an exaggerated pathological way he is also bullied by his uh, by his uh, his peers by Joyce and uh, uh, Mabel Joyce and Mabel Warren uh, yeah biographers also mention um, that Graham Greene himself was bullied when he was a teenager by his uh, peers so that's why biographies sometimes are uh, useful okay in that they to a certain extent, uh, reflect the inner experience, previous inner experiences of, of the others. Uh, but Peter also uh, refuses to convey uh, his fears to anybody else except his brother. We'll speak about the problem of communication or lack of communication later on in the themes. Uh, Peter, on the other hand, represents the whole healthy twin, the twin who, uh, who, who, who is stronger and who is protective. One uh, very symbolic instant of his role as a protective brother is when he uh, delayed uh, the the, the, the feared and the dreaded moment of the hide and seek game we, uh, by uh, eating, by demanding uh, a piece of cake and sipping uh, his tea slowly in order to delay the moment of uh, the dramatic game of hide and seek. But 
so in certain to a certain extent francis is not a dynamic ca character uh, francis is definitely not a dynamic character okay he does not ch change he, there is no transformation in his character okay throughout the story he stayed the same from the moment of uh, of the dream till he till his tragic end uh, peter is kind of peter and francis are kind of uh round characters they are uh, why because there is kind of struggle agitation they are especially peter is uh we could sense under the lines between the lines his uh, feelings of fear also his feelings of uh unrest okay uh why i'm telling while i'm saying so is because because in the story Graham Green tells us that they stand as mirrors to each other. So, and we could raise the question here: whether Peter, whether Peter himself, uh, does not externalize and project uh, that aspect which does not want which he does not want which he does not desire to see in himself that is uh, the, the state of fear does does he not project and externalize that state of fear in, onto his brother since the, his brother is a mirror and also uh, but the opposite is true right let's read through the story uh, let's all quote from the story i think it's page 40 in your uh, uh, in your uh, uh, in your in in the story in your version of the story which you have as a twin he was in many ways an all an only child to address Peter was to speak to his own image uh, in a mirror an image a little altered by a flaw in the glass so as to throw back less likeness of what he was than of what he wishes to be so francis wishes to be uh, courageous and bold but he peter stands as but he couldn't of course but peter stands as the the projection of uh, and mirror of what francis himself wanted to be but the opposite also is true francis stands as a mirror and as a projection of the part which peter does not want to be that is fear so which means that the fear is lurking deep in peter himself but he managed to externalize that he his fear into his twin brother so it's our uh mirrors standing against each other uh, i know yeah this is an anecdote but i'm sure you heard uh, kind of these stories yourselves i personally know a twins uh, who uh, feel each other and who come up with actions which are similar to each other despite their being living in different cities in morocco uh, for example uh, uh, one of these twins once told me that he bought a gelaba in a certain color and called his brother to find that his brother bought the same gelaba, gelaba with the same color and once he wanted to visit his aunt in uh, which he hasn't visited for a long time in another city only to be surprised by his brother calling him and suggesting that they would uh, they, they, they suggesting that they go to visit their aunt uh, in that city so yeah so this is uh, uh, telepathy between twins is not uh, is a, is not uh, a new or surprising subject all has been uh, discussed uh, a lot and you could check that yourselves the events in the story advance evolve and take momentum through conflicts if there are no conflicts there is no plot and if there is no plot there would be no uh, s worthwhile story to be told in the first place 
the inner conflict in the story is the inner struggle of uh, which the inner psychic struggles which take place within the self of Francis his, his uh, agitations his hesitations his plans and strategies which he builds and which he plans in order to avoid uh, attending the party in order to escape the party uh, all of these embody uh, the inner conflict in the story as for the external conflicts there are several ones the conflict of Francis against the adults uh, against his mother against the nurse against mrs. Hin Falcon in order to escape uh, the party all of those excuses which he presents one by one in order to escape the party there is also uh, for instance conflict against uh, against the party itself although this is uh, an inner uh, conflict I should say uh, the party itself which is the source of his pain and suffering is also the conflict between Francis and the children, Mabel and Joyce Warren, who uh, bullied him and who poke fun at him and who mock him and humiliate him, so kinds to avoid him. So he attempts to avoid them to uh, cope up with their uh, their uh, their their uh, their mockery and uh, and uh, and. Uh, uh, and humiliation uh, is itself okay or contribute to uh, the pushing forward of the plot of the story and also there is let's not forget Peter himself and Peter struggles to save his brother uh, defending him delaying uh, the party so kind of a struggle between Peter and the time itself in order to, okay when he sips his uh, T slowly in order to de delay the moment of the game. As for the plot structure, uh, the exposition, the first phase of the structure of the plot is the exposition, and it is the 5th of January. Uh, it is the atmosphere which the author uh, set up for, uh, for the story, the the rain which tops against the window, uh, the dream, uh, yeah, the dim light in the room, etc. So these are the elements of 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 uh, of the exposition, which prepares us for the beginning of uh, of the action, the actions in the story. So actions, the rising action started from the moment. Uh, in which uh, uh, Peter, oh, sorry, Francis conveys his fear of attending the, the, the party and playing hide and seek game. And from then, uh, the events and the actions escalate, build up, okay, uh, through the excuses. He, which he presents one by one in order to escape the party and yeah they keep rising and escalating till the climax the turning point of uh, of uh, uh, in the story which is the moment of turning off the lights and the kicking off of the uh, of the game of the hide and seek game after that actions started to fall kind of when he, uh, everybody, uh, everyone, sorry, uh, took his uh, place and hid it in, in, in the dark, and Peter embarks on a journey to uh, fetch uh, his brother in order to assure him. The resolution is is, uh, is tragic, okay, is marked by the tragic ending of the party and of Francis' life himself. That's it. Several themes are invoked in the story. The first is that of brotherhood. Brotherhood is not an abstract concept. It's not a void concept. It has meaning into it, built into it. Brotherhood involves unity. 
it involves near uh, it involves communication it involves uh identification so the, uh, the 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 two twins are united with each other they are uh, seamlessly communicating with each other they are in sync with each other i have already explained in sync in sync s y n c in synchronization with each other as you synchronize a mobile with another device or an account with another account so they have near identical thoughts they 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 get in touch with each other uh, either uh, even non-verbally that is through touch through feelings they there is kind of telepathy which is going on between between the two twins so brotherhood involves unity but also responsibility uh, protection and sacrifice to be able to be my brother with her in, uh, my brother in from my father from my parents that is in blood or my brother virtually this is to be able to be is to be able to make certain sacrifices to be responsible to protect me and vice versa so brother brotherhood I repeat involves unity communication identification uh, uh, but also responsibility sacrifice and sacrifices and protection the second theme is that of death death is a prevalent theme in many classics in literature why because it is unavoidable and it is our destiny at the end of the day we are going all of us are going to to die and death is imminent it's always there uh, the potential of that is uh, always there in our in our lives it could take place in in a moment so the story opens with the dream of or with francis dream of dying and ends with his tragic death so we could die even in games yeah so that is everywhere and in, in all situations another theme which i personally see is that of destiny uh, given the Catholic faith of the author, he's a Catholic, he's, he's, he's a believer, he's a Christian believer. Destiny is an implied theme in the story. It's not explicitly stated there, but it's an implied in my, in my opinion. Destiny, Qadar, Qadar. Destiny is unavoidable. It is predetermined. So whatever we do, it is, destiny is, always uh, on the corner right waiting for us this is anyway uh, so despite Francis attempts to avoid uh, attending the party to evade the party to escape uh, the hide and seek game despite Peter's attempts to help his brother uh, get through and uh, uh, present excuses on his behalf okay the tragic end is imminent and unavoidable yeah it happens that sometimes uh, you know that whatever you do cannot stop what is uh, coming uh, yeah sometimes what is ironic is that sometimes destiny occurs through the very actions which we will come up with in order to, to avoid that destiny this is what is ironic uh, in the first place yeah uh, another theme is fear fear is also part and parcel of the human nature we we live with fear on a daily basis of course many people don't uh, exaggerate the state of of, of 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 fear but for many people or for every human being fear is always there and it depends on people's capacity and ability to cope up with fear and to control it fear of the dark places of dark places and confinements uh, claustrophobic there is also unnamed fear sometimes we fear from things which we could not precisely name so for example we cannot uh, remember the dream Francis cannot remember the dream he does not know what he but he still thinks that it is 
that he, it is a bad dream, but he doesn't, he cannot name it, he cannot remember it. Fear of the Warren girls, okay, uh, Francis fear of, uh, of the bullying of the Warren girls is kind of psychosexual fear, gender, in intergender fear. Uh, Peter's fear of, and Peter's, Peter's fear of failure and inadequacy. He tried to, he tried his best to save his brother, to rescue his brother, but he uh, couldn't at the end of the day. Allahu Akbar. He stopped because it's the call for the prayer and continue, inshallah. Another prevalent and salient theme in the story is communication, or rather the lack of communication. There is a lack of communication throughout the story. Francis couldn't express and convey his fears except to his brother, as we said earlier. There is a problem of communication. Francis is dealt with only in the imperative. You are told to, he is told to, you must go, don't be silly. Uh, and at the end he is blocking his mouth. Okay, I don't remember what it is here in the story. Anyway, uh, it will take me time to find it. So, blocking, blocked his mouth, okay, at the end because he could not. He is always ordered, dealt with, with the imperative form. You must go, don't be silly. Uh, the adults, mother, nurse, the nurse and Mr. Mrs. Hin Falcon are indifferent. They are insympathetic. Insympathetic. Uh, they they are uh, they trivialize uh, uh, Francis' uh, reasoning and uh, and excuses. Trivialize that is uh, deal with them in a light-hearted way. That is, uh, they don't care about. They don't take his reasoning seriously and his uh, fears seriously so they quickly dismiss his and his his fears uh, repeating keeping uh, keep repeating that adult refrain As, okay i'm quoting from from the story you know there is nothing to be afraid of in the dark you know there is nothing to be afraid of in the dark yeah uh, and they take his fears and his reasoning as childish so there is an inability to lack of understanding an inability to uh, put themselves in the shoes of their of uh, of the boy uh, yes uh, so peter uh, francis doesn't even uh, isn't able to convey his his feelings and his fears and what who takes and it is Peter who takes charge of defending his brother and speaking on his behalf. Reading the story, Francis has got a cold. Hadn't he better stay in bed? So this is Peter who is speaking on behalf of his brother. So lack of communication and understanding. So it's in uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's an accusation and indictment of uh, of uh, the adults in the story. Right, adults who are incapable of understanding and uh, the boy and taking seriously his fears and agitations. The end of the party would not have the impact which it has without the, the literary craft of the author, Sina al Adabi. A craft which is embodied in several techniques and literary devices which the author employs in order to uh, enhance the effect of the story, in order to accentuate the events of the story, and in order to highlight the themes of the story and get his message across. I will discuss uh, a few of them here. To begin with, there is the uh, element or the literary device of irony. Irony, by definition, is when an expression or a statement, the intended meaning of an expression or a statement, is the opposite of the literary meaning. For example, uh, imagine somebody comes up with a stupid question. Okay, and say, and you say or you retort or reply. What an intelligent question! 
Sometimes teachers, some teachers do that. What an intelligent question. Yeah, which is, which means what? A very stupid question. Or some, uh, that's, uh, that's an example of verbal irony. Situation irony, situation which is ironic. For example, imagine a group of thieves who, ro who broke into and robbed a police station police station which is meant to defend citizens against thieves in the in the first place it is police officers who are meant to catch and arrest thieves not the other way around so in the story uh, irony takes place through the actions mainly of Peter's actions or attempts to save his brothers but attempts which bounce back okay uh, uh, in uh, in very ironic and uh, sarcastic way uh, ways for example yeah the, the most glaring example is uh, it happens at the twist ending of the story itself when Peter gropes through the dark and fetches uh, uh, Francis and puts his hand on a, on Francis's face uh, but while but instead of reassuring him and quieting him he uh, scared him to death that's very ironic. Or when uh, Peter wanted to uh, to, uh, to 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 present and uh, the last excuse to save uh, uh, to save Francis from uh, participating in the game, uh, when he says, "Okay, let me read from page forty-one." Uh, then he said impulsively to Mrs. Hen Falcon, "Please, I don't think Francis would play. The dog makes him makes him jump so." They were the wrong words. Six children began to sing "Cordy, Cordy, Cossard." Very ironic, right? All things, okay. By these words, he turns uh, things upside down, and he makes uh, and he puts Francis in a very embarrassing situation. The second element is symbolism. This literary device is symbolism. Uh, symbols are heavily employed in the story uh, and for good reason. For example, let's take the bird. How many times uh, did you come across bird or big bird in the story? Birds, a big bird, a great swooping bird, right? Birds in literature uh, symbolize, especially big birds, symbolize death and darkness and imminent danger. Okay, great swooping bird whose wings darken the room and sometimes in another uh, instance darken the face of Peter. Also, did you pay attention to the name of the host, of the organizer of the party herself, Mrs. Hen Falcon? Hen is a chicken, but falcon is a bird of prey, a bird which pounces on its on uh, uh, its prey and kills them. A sucker, falcon. Right. It's so uh, she's. It's a very symbolic name, and it is the party and the organizer of the party at the end, at the end of the day, which brought up the or brought forth the end of Francis's life another uh, technique is the imagery uh, it is uh, uh, okay uh, 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 Graham Greene describes what's going on many scenes uh, in the story in vivid graphic details vivid details graphic uh, minute details uh, employing sensory images images which uh, uh, which uh, employs uh, the senses or makes use of the senses of touch sometimes uh, smell there is no smell there but touch and vision uh, mainly uh, let's go through some examples here for example the train in the beginning of the story the train tapped against the glass tapped against the glass, right? It is the rain in Western literature conveys a sense of gloom of and melancholy it's, uh, in contrast to the Arabic Islamic uh, tradition in which rain has positive uh, connotations. So it is, rain is uh, uh, portrayed here as 
unpleasant, somebody unpleasant, unpleasant the guest who tries to enter the chamber, to enter the room and bounce on, maybe on Francis. Stop stopping on the window. This is reinforced later on in the text when we read about the touch of rain. The touch. And the touch here is uh, what scares Francis most, especially touch in in the dark. And remember, it is the touch which uh, doomed him, which uh, brought forth his end and uh, brought back, brought, sorry, forth his death at the instant touch of of Peter, so the touch of rain. Of rain. Uh, also, uh, Mabel and Joyce Warren, the, the, uh, the little kids, were portrayed as cats. They who slink, they slink like cats on padded claws. They slink, that is, they creep like cats with padded claws, with claws which are uh, about to prey, to pounce up on their victims. And the victim here is Francis. So you see the, the the imagery of the images of touch and of praying and of uh, and of pouncing. And the victim here, uh, the helpless victim, as I said, is Francis. These techniques played two functions in the story: foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is a win and a foreboding element. Foreboding nadir. Nadir or Shu'ab or Nadir Shayin Sayyir, right? Foreboding uh, element in the story is inserted there in the story uh, as a foreboding for what's going to happen later on in the story, for the unpleasant event which is going to happen later on. But most of the readers didn't even pay attention to that. Uh, but some few smart ones uh, uh, surely do. For example, the title itself. I myself didn't pay attention to to uh, to the title and I read it as a normal title, but was surprised by the end. That is until the end that I figured out the meaning of the title. But you know, it's already there. The end of the party, which is the end of Francis himself, the nightmare, which forebodes the death of 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 of. Uh, of Francis, the nightmare from the very beginning of the text, but few readers, as I said, pay attention to that. The symbols, the birds, which I've just discussed, the big birds, the big swooping birds whose uh, uh, wings block the lights, block uh, uh, the sights, and which signify that in literature, and the name of Mrs. Falcon, the bird of prey. Yes, uh, the second, so in addition to foreshadowing, there is also the technique of suspense. Yeah, uh, Graham Greene deftly and skillfully manages to build suspense throughout the story and draws the attention, uh, to draw the attention of readers and make them uh, stay alert and follow and ask what's going to happen next. That is through the escalating fear. Fear builds up and escalates gradually throughout the story by the heartbeats of Francis, by the sense of Monas, which is prevalent in the text, Monas, in the birds, in the thatch, in the darkness, etc. By uh, the successive strategies of Francis, which we as readers follow one by one and asking whether it will, he will uh, uh, cope up or just will he manage to sort things out and get through his predicament. Also through vivid description of 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 uh, of certain scenes. Let's take this the example of this scene, uh, which takes place at uh, uh, the end of the story. Yeah, that's when we hear the hushed movements of the seekers of uh, in hide seek uh, in hide and seek game. Feet f feet moving on the carpet, feet moving on the carpet, hands brushing wall. Yeah, that's, that takes place in darkness. Hands brushing a wall. A curtain pulled apart. This is sensory image of sound. The clicking handle. The sound of the clicking handle. The opening of the cupboard door. Yeah, so 
suspense is built up and we ask what's going to ha to to happen next does it also does it also happen to you sometimes that you well even being an adult uh, you are in the dark but you or sometimes sleeping and you hear a clicking sound of something or the opening of a door sometimes even opened by the wind but you jump up jump off your place and be scared and uh, ask who is who is there yeah that's a situation in which both uh, which is uh, as I said fear is uh, part and parcel of human nature it's it is just a matter of of the scope of fear and of our ability to control fear or to let it loose and be controlled by it and that's it guys thank you very much for your attention and see you uh, in the next video bye